Hi, I'm Josh. I am here with Akram, who is a director of product at Databricks. Today, I know you have a demo for us around the SAP to Databricks connector. You want to go ahead and kick it off? Yes, 100%. Yeah. So before I do the demo, I just want to say that like now we have this partnership with SAP. Um, uh, probably many of you uh, know about it. Like Shanko, I think, was on your uh, podcast earlier and then talked about the overall partnership we have. This particular demo I'm going to do is the ability to share data from SAP BDC, which is SAP Business Data Cloud, natively into your own Databricks environment so that you can commingle that data with your enterprise data platform and then use all of your Databricks features with the data from SAP with zero copy user data sharing. So that's pretty much the um, uh, uh, the idea here, uh, and it's now generally available. It's available on all clouds. So let me just go right ahead and then uh, show you the demo, and then uh, I can tell you, tell you a little bit more about uh, how it works in the and whatnot. All right, so here I am. I am in the Databricks workspace. Many of you probably familiar uh, with it. Uh, I can go to my UDD catalog. I see some uh, data, and then I can go to my Add Data page, and this is where um, I can see all the connectors that are available. And if I click on SAP BDC, I can see here connection identifier that I can use to set up uh, on the SAP side. So now I switch tabs, I go to SAP and uh, I can go to the business data cloud uh, where I will be able to set up the connection to Databricks. So there is a feature called uh, SAP uh, applications that has an SAP BDC cloud connect. And that's the functionality that would allow me to provision uh, the connection to Databricks. So I can go there, I can uh, click Start Provisioning, and just in a few clicks, I can uh, finish the connection. So I, can, I need to give it a name uh, that will appear on the Databricks side. So here I'm gonna just copy paste the name that I had. I need to choose a resource group, which is basically um, a namespace or a logical boundary uh, in uh, BDC. So I choose that and then I can get started. So click next. I choose the coda that I'm going to configure in SAP. So this is kind of BDC uh, specific configuration. And then that link that I uh, copied from Databricks, I can paste in here and I can choose the region where I am uh, provisioning and then uh, I'm done. So once I hit finish, uh, the provisioning of the Databricks connectivity is done. All I need to do is get a link from here that I would be able to go and paste into the uh, Databricks UI where I'd be able to uh, establish the connectivity. So this is the URL that I get from here. I copy this URL and I can go back to uh, the Databricks UI where I can finish the provisioning with this URL that was already provisioned. So I go here where I started. I click connect to BDC. This is the link that I just got from there. Let me copy paste it. I put it in here. And then once I hit connect, I am pretty much done with setting up the connection and I can go see the provider that appears in my data sharing page uh, that would show all of the data products that uh, I will be sharing. So this is kind of shows the uh, CUJ, uh, how do you set it up? You see it takes maybe two minutes overall uh, for uh, somebody to set it up. It does require a persona on Databricks as well as a persona on uh, uh, BDC to kind of uh, uh, set it up. Uh, using that kind of handshake. So it's all secure with MTLS. There is no secrets. There is no OAuth. There is no um, uh, uh, secret keys or things like that. It's all uh, OIDC MTLS and it's all uh, uh, very easy to do with a few clicks. Okay, now that the uh, connection between Databricks and SAP BDC has been set up, uh, what I want to do is I want to share uh, some um, data products. And the whole point of this integration is to kind of unlock the value of the data and make it easily available uh, in Databricks. Uh, so to do that, I need to go to the BDC kind of data catalog and then share it from there. So here I am in the BDC catalog. I can see all of the active uh, data products and these 
uh, come, there is like uh, uh, built-in products that come with SAP BDC, and I can also create custom data products uh, based on all of the data that, is, that I have. Uh, and here I can go for a data product that is that exists. I can click share, and because I have set up that connectivity with Databricks, I can just choose the, the target system that I have configured in the uh, in the connection. And then uh, once I'm done, uh, I can uh, basically create a share, and then it will appear uh, in my data sharing page uh, in Databricks. So that's pretty much um, is the uh, CUJ of uh, uh, how to set it up, uh, all the, uh, how to share a data product. And one, now that I have this connection, if I go to a uh, data sharing page, I see that there is a provider here that is corresponding to that uh, connection that I just created with BTC. So if I go to this provider, I will be able to see all of the data products that were shared from BTC as I shown uh, earlier. And it's like any other native data share. So I can just mount it to a catalog. Uh, so this one, for example, uh, credit memo request. So I can call it credit memo requests. Got to get yeah. the, those underscores there. Or... <laughs> yeah, I well, I uh, I don't know if it's actually required, but I, I use the underscores. That was kind of my convention. Yeah. Uh, so here I see, you can see, I always do that, like even here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, so it's good. so it's good. here I see the credit memo request and then I can see, there you go. They didn't know, we did not use underscores in SAP. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here I can see basically the tables that are available live uh, from SAP. I did not have to build any pipelines. I did not have to uh, basically ETL anything. I did not have to figure out like licenses or third-party tools to kind of extract the data out of SAP is basically live sharing natively that appears in my unity catalog. It is, it is, it is very sweet to be able to do all that from one such as such a key system like SAP into Databricks. So I would say re relatively easily. So yeah. And I think the cool thing is that a lot of customers tell us there's a lot of data in SAP that is underutilized. And just because of the friction uh, of kind of getting that data out and getting it closer to the data scientists, to the AI, to the applications that they want to build on top. So we're expecting this is going to unlock a lot of value for customers who want their SAP data to be commingled with data they may have on data breaks from other systems, from their applications, from their operations, from their logs, uh, from Salesforce, from other partners that we have. And we have many, many data partners that use Delta Sharing. We might talk about that uh, later. And uh, being able to kind of combine all of that and then being able to use Databricks is, is awesome. So here you can see the share. It appears uh, from Databricks, uh, uh, sorry, from SAP in Databricks, and then it shows all of the uh, columns that I have in the table. And this is just a regular table uh, in my Unity catalog, like any other table. So I can do permissions, find grade access control on it. I can see the lineage on it. I can obviously use it in all of the Databricks functionality, whether it's jobs, whether it's SQL, uh, whether it's AIBI, whether it's agent breaks. So the SAP data get, really gets its full potential uh, using uh, Databricks because it's shared natively into my own uh, Databricks platform. It's basically near time. Yeah, it's it's near uh, near time, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, we actually have, I don't have a uh, uh, demo prepared for it here, but we have the ability to share back from Databricks into SAP as well. Uh, using also data sharing as the protocol. So you can do back and forth if you want to kind of transform the data and then share it back into BDC. And then uh, obviously once the data is in data rates, you can also uh, basically keep it here and then do all, do all of the analysis you want to do on data rates. So that was cool demo. It works, gets that access to SAP data without complicated pipelines. Now, what solutions have you heard from customers that they've built leveraging Databricks and SAP together? Yeah, I, this is a great question. So um, customers are looking at a very wide variety of use cases to use their SAP data. Like it goes all the way from uh, data engineering, like classic data engineering uh, transformation of the data to make it uh, combined with their own internal data, all the way to building applications and AI with Azure Bricks. So customers are looking forward to kind of the ability to kind of take their data and then combine it with with their own um, 
uh, data set. So we're seeing customers interested in using Genie, uh, AIBI, uh, we're seeing customers interested in uh, obviously the data warehousing uh, and then building dashboards on top of those data. And then we're seeing customers uh, looking to use Asian brakes and, and building AI agents uh, on top of that data. So there's a wide spectrum. This data is very valuable and so underutilized that I think a lot of customers are very excited to like just put their hands on it and then unlock the, the value that they can get with data brakes on it. And, and so, so you cover a lot of like from a technology aspect, what about from like a solutions aspect? Like what, 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 what does connecting SAP data to all this Databricks features and capabilities? Like, you know, realistically, what are, what are some of the possibilities that it unlocks for them? Oh yeah, I, th I think the big use cases is anything that has to do with finance data. So a lot of companies have their transactions and financial data sitting in SAP systems. Uh, supply chain data and ERP data also uh, is a big use case. So being able to get uh, all of those uh, 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 basically uh, SKU data and product level data that sits in uh, SAP and then getting into Databricks. And uh, finally, customer data. So anything that has to do with, uh, with customer level information that you want to combine with your data. So there is supply chain optimization type of solutions and use cases. There is a finance uh, analytics uh, based on like financial transactions, and there is customer 360 where you want to build like a 360 view of your customers. These are some of the use cases that are that a lot of customers are looking to do. Like every CEO is, uh, every person in every company is thinking, how do I actually uh, improve my business outcomes? Whether that's drive more revenue or reduce my costs or whatnot, or we get to know my customers better, optimize my campaigns, optimize my supply chain. And like Databricks is like a, a, a tool that helps you kind of accelerate that so much faster with better uh, TCO. And that's really the, uh, the idea here. So like everything uh, that we do at Databricks is really geared towards like those business use cases that uh, customers are trying to do.